You are tuned to IRA Learning, and I am your host, Teacher Teacher. In this periodic table and periodicity lesson, we will examine the trends of Group 7 elements. Note that Group 7 elements are also called halogens. Check the description box for links to all the videos related to this unit. By the end of this lesson, we should be able to explain trends within group 7. The first trend for discussion is the physical state of the halogens at room temperature. All halogens exist as diatomic molecules in the element form. That means that two atoms of the element bond together to form a molecule with the general formula X2, where X can be substituted with the symbol of any halogen or group 7 element. The first halogen we will examine is fluorine. Fluorine is a highly reactive poisonous yellow gas with chemical formula F2. Chlorine has a chemical formula Cl2 and it's a very reactive poisonous pale green gas. Bromine is a poisonous red-brown volatile liquid which has a chemical formula Br2. Iodine or iodine has chemical formula I2. It's a shiny black solid at room temperature that sublimes into a poisonous purple gas when heated. Therefore, the physical state at room temperature changes from gas to liquid to solid descending group 7. And note that RT represents room temperature. So fluorine and chlorine are gases, bromine is a liquid, and iodine and astatine are solids. The second trend for discussion is the atomic radius or size. If we take a look at the atomic diagrams for the first four elements of group 7, we will notice that the last shell contains seven electrons. However, there is an extra shell filled with electrons added to each atom going down the group. And this is so because each atom is in a different period. Fluorine is in period Two, so it has two shells. Chlorine has three shells because it's in period three. Bromine in period four has four shells and so on. Since each progressive atom descending the group has one more shell than the previous atom, the atomic radius increases. And we can see this quite obviously in our diagrams. So therefore, the atomic size increases descending group seven. In fact, the atomic radius or size increases down all the groups in the periodic table. The third trend is shielding. As we learned in the previous lesson, shielding occurs when the inner lying shells of electrons block or weaken the effect of the nuclear pull on the outer shell electrons. As the atomic radius increases down the group, the number of inner lying electron shells also increases. That is, the number of shells between the nucleus and the last shell increases. If we take a look at the atomic diagrams to the left of our screen, you will notice that fluorine has two shells, of which one is an inner lying shell. Chlorine has three shells, of which two are inner lying shells. Bromine has three inner lying shells. Iodine has four inner lying shells. And of course, if we had a diagram of astatine, astatine would have had five inner lying electrons. Electron shells. So from the illustration, we observe that the number of inner lying shells increases as the atoms get larger going down the group. These inner lying electron shells weaken or shield the nuclear pull for the electrons on the outer shell. You may have noticed that the deep red color in the animation is concentrated closer to the nucleus, which represents where the nuclear pull is strongest. And that that the red color fades moving away from the nucleus, showing that the inner lying shells shield or weaken the nuclear pull on the shells further away from the nucleus. Therefore, the more inner lying shells an atom has, the greater the shielding effect on the nuclear pull for the outer shell electrons. Consequently, shielding increases going down group 7 as the atomic radius increases. Note that shielding makes it difficult 
for the larger atoms to strongly pull the outer shell electrons towards the nucleus. The fourth trend is reactivity. Group 7 elements react by gaining or accepting one electron onto its outer shell to complete the octet. That is having eight electrons on the last shell. As we descend or go down the group, the atomic radius increases and so does shielding. Shielding, as we know, reduces the effect of the nuclear pole on the outer shell electrons. Therefore, as the atomic radius increases, Increases, it becomes more difficult for the nucleus to attract its own outer shell electrons, furthermore, an additional electron from a neighboring atom. In other words, elements lower down group 7 are less reactive because they do not easily accept an additional electron. Therefore, reactivity decreases down group 7. Note that an atom becomes negatively charged when it gains electrons. An atom with a charge, that is, whether a positive charge or a negative charge, as in this case, it's called an ion, I-O-N. The atom gains one negative charge, that is a minus one charge, for each electron gained. A negatively charged ion is called an anion. Therefore, when group 7 atoms react, they gain one electron to form an anion that has a charge of negative one. Hence, the anion would be represented by X, which would be the symbol of any of the halogens in group 7, and the charge, negative 1, written superscript to the right top of the symbol. Note, we do not write the numeral 1 in the charge because we never write the numeral 1 in any chemical formula. It is important to emphasize that before the halogens react, their name ends in the suffix ene, I-N-E. Therefore, the halogens before they react are called fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. However, once the halogen reacts, the anion is formed as in X negative charge. The name of the anion now ends with the suffix ide, I-D-E. So after the fluorine atom bonds, it becomes fluoride, which is F with a charge of negative one. Chlorine becomes chloride, which is is Cl with a charge of negative 1. Bromine becomes bromide, now having a charge of negative 1, Br negative 1. And iodine becomes iodide, I, with a charge of negative 1. Next, we have the strength of oxidizing power. Now, the oxidizing power has to do with the capability of an atom to gain additional electrons on the outer shell. Also note that atoms that gain electrons readily are called oxidizing agents. Recall that it becomes progressively more difficult for atoms to gain electrons descending group 7 due to shielding by the inner lying electrons as the atomic size increases. Therefore, oxidizing power decreases down group 7. Fluorine, being the smallest atom of the group 7 elements, will gain or accept electrons more readily. Hence, it is the most oxidizing of the halogens. That is, it is the most powerful oxidizing agent. Now, let us compare or describe the oxidizing power of the first four halogens. That is, we will outline how effective they are as oxidizing agents. In other words, we want to know how readily they can gain an additional electron on the valence shell, which is also called the last shell. Fluorine is the most powerful oxidizing agent because it has the smallest atomic radius of all the halogens. Hence, there is less shielding of the nuclear power for the outer shell electrons. And as a result, fluorine is most likely to accept an additional electron on the last shell when it reacts. Chlorine is a strong oxidizing agent, bromine is fairly strong, and iodine is weak. Therefore, oxidizing power decreases down group 7. We will end the lesson with additional facts about halogens. Fact 1. The name halogen comes from the Greek word hals, meaning salt, and gen, meaning to make. Therefore, the term halogen means to make salt. Fact 2. Simple compounds that contain halogens are called halides. Fact 3. 
Halogens do not exist in nature in their free element forms. They exist in the diatomic form, so fluorine as F2, chlorine as Cl2, bromine as Br2, and iodine as I2. Fact 4. The first halogen to be isolated and recognized as an element was chlorine, Cl2. And as we learned earlier, chlorine is a pale green poisonous gas. Fact 5. Fluorine is considered one of the most reactive elements in existence. Fact 6. Fluorine gas, F2, is deadly. Fact 7. Bromine is derived from the Greek word bromos, meaning stench. Therefore, you can imagine what bromine smells like. Fact 8. Astatine is radioactive and decays very quickly. Here are the summary points for this lesson. Halogens exist in nature in their diatomic form, F2, Cl2, Br2, I2. Fluorine and chlorine are gases. Bromine is a liquid. Iodine is a solid at room temperature. All halogens are toxic, that is, they are poisonous. Atomic radius and shielding increases down the group. Reactivity and oxidizing power decrease down group 7. Fluorine is the most reactive of the halogens. The word halogen means to make salt. Halogens form anions. Those are negative ions when they react. It's quiz time. You have five seconds to answer each question after it is read aloud. Question 1. Which halogen is the most reactive? A. Fluorine, B. Chlorine, C. Bromine, D. Iodine. The answer is A. Fluorine. Question 2. Which properties decrease going down group 7? A. Shielding and reactivity. B. Shielding and atomic size. C. Atomic size and oxidizing power. D. Reactivity and oxidizing power. The answer is D. Reactivity and oxidizing power decrease going down group 7. Question 3. Identify the statement that is incorrect about the halogens descending group 7, that is, going down group 7. A. The state of matter changes from gas to liquid to solid. B. Reactivity decreases. C. Oxidizing power increases. D. Shielding increases. The answer is C. The incorrect statement about halogens is that oxidizing power increases going down group 7. As we know, oxidizing power decreases going down group 7. Question 4. Identify the statement that is correct about the halogen iodine. A. Iodine is a black solid at room temperature. B. Iodine solid sublimes into a purple or violet vapor when heated. C. Iodine reacts very slowly with other substances. D. All of the above. The answer is D. All of the above statements are correct about iodine. Question 5. Which halogen is radioactive and decays very quickly? A. Iodine, B. Astatine, C. Fluorine, D. Chlorine. The answer is B, astatine. We have reached the end of our lesson. If you found this video helpful, remember to like, share, and subscribe. When you subscribe, you will receive notifications as new videos are uploaded. So until next time, I am Teacher Teacher with iRelearning.